Guys, guys, no, no driving today. No, no, road closed, thanks. Someone didn't get the memo. God, no, no, the road. Who didn't send out the memo about this highway being closed? Okay. okay. So just two and a half feet from the wall. Previously on Getting Dirty, we are moving across the road over to my mom's. So this is my mom's east yard. There has always been this really long white fence. I might as well take that fence right on out. Sometimes you just gotta jiggle it until it breaks free. A little bit of a landscaping crew has arrived to install the wall. First they dug a trench and then they're gonna add in the gravel and that's what the stone is gonna go on top of. I chose a natural limestone because it's native to Iowa and I really like choosing products that seem organic and like they would come from the area. Wow, he's actually really agile with that. <laughs> And with that last stone, that is it for the wall. Hi guys, I'm Caleb. I grew up in the middle of cornfields in Iowa, and now I live on a farm of my own. I grow a lot of my own food, but also love landscaping my yard. Have you ever wanted to landscape your yard, but it just seems kind of overwhelming? This is the start to finish basics of what you need to know so you can be inspired to do your own. Whether you want to plant one shrub, a flower, or a whole project, so come with me, let's go outside, because at the end of the day, it's all about getting dirty. Hey guys, so the perennial bed of my house is done, and we are over at my mom's, and we need to finish up this awesome new wall that I had installed. And to do that, we just need to plant a beautiful boxwood hedge all along it. So that's what we're doing today, installing these beautiful Monrovia boxwood. And guys, honestly, this is gonna look so good. And in a few years when it's grown in, let me tell ya, it will be gorgeous. So let me just give you a quick recap of what this plan is. I'm putting in this long limestone wall. On the upside of it is gonna be this beautiful boxwood hedge. And there'll be a center step where you can go down into a new orchard full of all different kinds of apple trees, some cherry trees, pear trees, beautiful trees and it will create two different intimate spaces. And remember, my friends at Monrovia have sent me some awesome plants to work with, and that is what we're gonna go get. So time to load up the gator and get this planting marathon started. The wall is in, I love it, and so are these columns you may notice. Now you may be thinking, why well, didn't see you put those in? Yeah, that's because I didn't. Well, they were a little bit heavier and bigger than I thought, as it kind of always goes. Which you need in this yard though, you need big and heavy and beautiful. So uh, the crew that was here painting the wall was able to put them in for me. I made them pie because I felt so bad because I think they're a little bit harder than they realized or I realized. But um, they're awesome. Look at these. You know I love anything old and antique and salvage and these are awesome. And um, they're going nowhere. I mean, they're they're here, so um, love them. They put a base to gravel under them because since they're extremely heavy, you're gonna need a good base for them. And to cover up that gravel, I am putting down this flagstone and then I'm gonna cover it with pea gravel. Honestly, I would put flagstone patios, walkways in everywhere if I could. I think, okay, maybe it's like my favorite stone. I don't know, do you guys have a favorite stone? <laughs> Come on, you have to dream about stone too. Tell me what yours is in the comments below. But that's not what we're doing today. We are gonna plant an awesome Green Mountain Boxwood Hedge. You know I love a boxwood, it makes me happy. And so I'm gonna make a hedge on each side of this and start planting. But before I start that, I wanna make sure I'm planting them on a straight line, so I'm gonna run some string. This is something I don't always do, but then when I'm done, I regret that it's not straight. So let's start with a smart thing in the beginning here. Can we have a coffee break? <laughs> okay, I need Bailey's in my coffee today. I keep a string with me at all times, thank you. If you want a straight line, you always want to put up string when you're planting. It just makes sense. I know everyone now has a foot meter because I save the world one foot meter at a time. Green Mountain Boxwood are more upright and grow about three, possibly four feet wide. So to make this be not a complete just wall, but kind of still see the plants themselves, I'm placing them far enough apart that they still are their own plants and not just one massive wall. The crew that installed the wall made sure to tell me that I probably shouldn't plant any closer than two feet. 
I didn't even think about that, but you don't want the roots pushing up against the wall and creating too much pressure. But for looks anyway, I've been measuring and about two and a half feet out from that wall is probably where I want my green mountain. It's gonna be the perfect size for them to grow full and really fill in the area. So I'm gonna measure two and a half feet out, put one of these stakes in, run a string all the way to the other end so I know I have a straight line. As you can see, I'm just kind of adjusting as I go because you know what, guys, these are just plants. It is easy, don't worry. That is where I want my first one to go, which really means that the pole really shouldn't go there because then my string will be in the way. So I'm gonna run it this way just a little bit. So yeah, the stake is actually then where a plant is going. So I'm just gonna move it back a little bit so it's just not right where the plant goes. So I'm gonna go measure the same distance on the other side of the wall and put the post in so I can run the string. Two and a half feet here again. Right there. Boom. Perfect. And if not, no one will know. We're gonna go high enough that we can plant underneath it. the inaugural boxwood. Then we're going three feet apart on each one, all the way down. I'm just gonna kind of first set them all on the wall and then kind of figure out, and then I'll just set them around as I go. Obviously the wind is not a friend today, so we're just gonna be laying these over because otherwise they're gonna keep falling over. So why fight it? Let's join it. Well, let's start digging holes, people. I'm gonna put on some gloves because, well, my hands are about like 90 years old by look, so I'll do what I can. And just to keep up my energy, we just need another swig of coffee. Just like throw it in there. check every so often. As you're going down the line planting plants, you just probably want to double check. Just use a tape measure every so often to make sure you're getting that same distance about from the wall. As you know, I like to water before I backfill with dirt. I just like to make sure that root ball is really well soaked and the ground around it is really saturated because I think it soaks up water better later on that way. It really accepts the water better. Now I'm just gonna backfill with the dirt and pack it in slightly. I know it probably looks weird to have all this gravel in here, and usually you would think, oh, that's bad. But they backfilled this wall with a lot of gravel, so there's quite a bit worked in the soil. And as long as it's loose and just worked in slightly, you don't need to worry too much about it. I'm gonna water them here just a little bit more because it has been extremely dry here. And I just really like to make sure they have a good watering when planted. Moral of the story here, friends, water water again and then water again because you know what they need water and yes I like to water the leaves too I think it's good for them to be wiped off from any dust and debris just helps them I think soak in all the good nutrients from the sun they need oh and did I mention it's dry here when watering you don't necessarily want to go over the plant and hold it way up into the air because that's gonna to lead to a lot more evaporation from all the wind and sun you want to do it right down at the base of the plant so it can get closer to the roots and honestly, doing this in the morning or the evening is gonna be better for the same reason. So 
So with this one side of the wall done, it is time to move on to the other side and kind of finish planting these plants. But you know what? Let's just take a quick break here. Planting a shrub or a perennial or a tree is gonna be somewhat the same and you just wanna follow some five basic steps. Make sure the plant is well watered to begin with. Dig a hole larger than the size of the root ball that you're gonna be planting. Break up that root ball slightly because they have been in the pot and starting to circle themselves. You wanna break them up so they grow out laterally because that's what a root wants to do, grow laterally, not circle itself. Put it in the hole no deeper than already was, maybe slightly higher so that root flare is above ground. Water it well, backfill it and tamp it down, and then make sure to water it once more just to make sure it has a good watering point to stand on. And then after this, always remember, keep up your watering, people. You need, you know, like a couple gallons per shrub about every other day probably when it's dry. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. They need it. So that is all for today. I just want to give them a final watering and then I'm going to be done. Well, for now. So it's a week later, the boxwood are looking great. They're hanging out, they're happy, they're fine. They say hi. Um, of course, I'm watering them regularly and something over the top like a mulch or compost always helps. Now, like you probably remember from my house, I kind of mentioned that I don't really like wood mulch. I don't think it breaks down very well. I don't think it's that great, but it does hold moisture in and my mom likes the look of it. So to make her happy because I do love my mom, I am gonna use some cedar mulch for her. And okay, I'll be honest, it does kind of make it look finished, give it that little finished edge, and it really does help hold water. I just like to do about one to two inches, nothing too thick. Come on, people, you don't need that much wood mulch. Keep it thin, one to two inches. So since this area is not done yet, the ground isn't completely graded, the garden isn't out yet, I don't really have a definition to the edge of this bed. So for now, the mulch is gonna act as that natural definition so you know where the bed begins and the yard will begin. So really, it gives a nice finishing touch. It looks really good and gives it just that nice like, it is done, the finito, I love it, it's beautiful, it's good. Now there's a lot more I wanna do with this area, obviously, and it is not done, but probably for this year, other than the grading I'm gonna do, it is mostly done. So the wall, the hedge, they are started, it is growing and it is gonna be beautiful. And it is the great start to a beautiful new area. So you guys, I have put in two awesome areas, a perennial bed at my house and this new wall and boxwood hedge at my mom's. It is really a beautiful start to a new beginning and I hope you can see how easy it is to put plants in. We put in a perennial bed at my house, some gorgeous hydrangea, salvia and veronica that bloom and give different colors and then also some beautiful arborvitaes that are gonna get tall and slender, great definition and beautiful structure with the boxwood on the corners. And let's not forget this beautiful table I put in. It is stone top. It is heavy as all get out. It is never going anywhere. And of course the pea gravel I put underneath to mimic my formal area across the way. Guys, I'm really excited how this space is gonna come together and grow up. It will be ever changing and beautiful. At my mom's it is really just the beginning of a transformation. The long hardscaped wall of limestone went in, beautiful columns, and of course the hedge of boxwood. They are gonna grow up, give a great intimate space and definition between two different gardens. And I'm so excited to move on forward with other plans of that later on. And all this is possible to the awesome people at Monrovia. They know what they're doing, so you don't have to worry about the plants you're getting. Because you know what? When you start off with something that's good, you know you're gonna have a good outcome. So I hope you guys are inspired and have enjoyed this fun gardening series. You know what? It is going to continue next summer, so make sure to check back because I want to know what you guys are doing in your yards and how you are inspired. And you know what? That's going to inspire me too. So until next time, get out there, get dirty, and have a little fun. Thanks for stopping at the farm, guys. See you later.